2.1 is just upon us, and of course that means that we have a new 4-star coming out, which a lot of people haven't entirely been talking about outside of the fact that he is extremely, extremely attractive. But, of course all the focus has been on Akron, but why don't we talk about Gallagher, the new fire abundance character that is coming out in Honkai Star Rail version 2.1. And of course, that means that we have a build guide ready for you because I think that Gallagher is going to be okay, but I want to make sure to give you the materials to actually build him properly. So before we get into that, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell to be notified of when the next Honkai Star Rail video comes out. And of course, leave a comment about what you think about Gallagher. And don't forget, I'm sponsored by the ever wonderful Gamer Subs. Use code Tyser for 10% off. Today, I am rocking some cursed energy. Also, I didn't buy this. Don't don't roast me in the comments. I didn't buy this Stanley Cup. I got it for free, though. So. Anyways, let's go ahead and dive right into our video. Of course, we do have Gallagher right up here. Big shout out to HoneyHunterWorld.com. Uh, love using them. So if you're ever wondering how to find this information, this is exactly how I find it. Now, let's go ahead and first talk about these uh, Dream Collection components, the Dream Flow Valves, and of course the Dream Making Engines. You're going to need 12 of the components. You're going to need 13 of the valves and 12 of the engines. You get these from Overworld Bot are not overworld bosses overworld enemies that uh are like soul glad enemies so the dog with the soda on it the t-rex any of those types of enemies will drop these types of components um so you're gonna want to make sure to remember your rules of three three of these components will make a valve three of the valves will make an engine so not only that but we're going to need more a little bit later. But before we get into that, let's talk about this. The Raging Heart Stagnant Shadow item uh, from the Shell of Faded Rage uh, Stagnant Shadow. So you're going to get a grand total of 50 of these. So you're going to need a, a good chunk. And that's going to be about 10 times fighting this Stagnant Shadow because you're going to get it to drop five times. You can do about eight of these a day. So two days worth of farming this boss and you'll be perfectly fine. Now, let's go ahead and talk about trace materials really quick. Remember those components, the valves, and the engines we were talking about? You're going to need 28 more of the components, which brings you up to a total of 40. You're going to need 42 more of the valves, which is going to bring you up to 55. And then the engines, you're going to need 54. So 54 in total of the engines. And again, rules of three. Remember that. We also got the new Calyx, or Abundance Calyx, the red Calyx that's in Penacone that just released in version 2.0, where you could actually get these, the alien tree seeds. You're going to also get the nourishing honeys and also, where is it? There we go. The myriad fruits. Remember your rules of three, three of the seeds will make a honey and three of the honeys will make a fruit. You're going to need 12 of the seeds, 54 of the mir or uh, blah, the honeys and 105 of the fruits. So it's going to be a tough grind, but you can do it. I believe in you. Let's go ahead and talk about these two the weekly boss that just keeps on giving because we have to fight him constantly the past evils of the borehole planet disaster we need a new weekly boss man i am so sick and tired of fighting this thing but anyways let's go ahead and talk about this right so you're gonna need 12 of these in total and you get three per run and you can battle the weekly boss three times a week right so you're gonna get nine so it's gonna be two weeks worth of grinding you can do you know, the first week in one day, to be quite honest, like it's not that hard. Honestly, uh, you could do these on Sunday and then wait for the Monday and then you could do do one more again. So it's really not difficult. Uh, you get five tracks of Destiny as well. So there's that. And about 2.7. Yeah, 2.6, 2.7 million credits. So it's a lot of credits to get them fully leveled up and traced out. But the traces are worth it, in my opinion, for characters. So let's go ahead and dive in first to the skill. The skill is nothing to write home about, in my personal opinion. Uh, Special Brew immediately heals a target ally by 20, 20 HP. So that's not really going to help out like your tanks, like Fushuan, in my opinion, because Fushuan will heal herself. And not only that, but she, you know, can tank like a mofo. This is to help out you like your DPS characters that are low health wise, like the 3000, 4000 HP people. So when you're using Gallagher, use this on them so that they don't, you know, pass on. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the champion's etiquette. 
or champagne etiquette i'm dumb why did i say champions uh inflicts besotted on all enemies lasting for two turns and at the same time deals fire damage equal to 187.5 percent of gallagher's attack to all enemies and enhances the next basic attack to nectar blitz what is nectar blitz well nectar blitz is your basic attack that you get from this ultimate uh deals fire damage equal to 325 percent of gallagher's attack to a single target enemy this is the basic attack after the ultimate right and reduces the target's attack by 18% lasting for two turns, which is pretty convenient, but it does get even more convenient when you actually have the organic yeast trace on it, which after using the ultimate immediately advances forward this unit's action by 100%, which means that shortly after activating the ultimate, you could basic attack and do nectar blitz, which is pretty worth it in my opinion. Now let's go ahead and talk about the talent tipsy tussle. The besotted state increases the break damage that targets receive by 15%. And every time a besotted target is attacked by an ally, the attacker's HP gets restored by 808 per, or 808 points. So that's really good in that sense. I think that Gallagher could work really, really well in teams, especially if he's able to get this uh, ultimate off with besotted. So definitely worth it. Let's go ahead and talk about the traces or the trace that really correlates with Tipsy Tussle, right? And that's Novel Concoction. Increases the unit's outgoing healing by an amount equal to 50% of break effect, up to a maximum outgoing uh, healing increase to 75%. So pretty dang good. And then lastly, let's talk about the technique here. Artisan Elixir uh, immediately attacks the enemy upon entering battle, inflicts besotted on all enemies lasting for two turns and deals fire damage equal to 50% of Gallagher's attack to all enemies. Now, the biggest thing is being able to inflict besotted on enemies. So you have to make sure that you have enough energy regeneration rate. Uh, so probably gonna put that as your chain, to be honest, in my opinion, but I digress. Let's go ahead and dive into light cones now, because light cones are going to be extremely important, especially with Gallagher being a break effector. Break effector? That's so weird. <laughs> I don't ever want to say break effector again. Uh, he's going to be using break effect as one of his uh, big thing so let's go ahead and talk about the skill of what is real which increases the wearer's break effect by 24 percent and after using a basic attack restores hp to the wearer by an amount equal to two percent of the max hp plus 800 so this is good i think that this is the perfect light cone for gallagher and i think that you should use this over anything else i will say though post-op observation is still a really good light cone it's one of the ones that's been there forever so it's definitely probably my second choice outside of the five star light cones i really don't think that you should put a five star light cone on gallagher personally but let's go ahead and talk about post-op conversation increase the wearer's energy regeneration rate by eight percent and increases outgoing healing when they use an ultimate by 12 percent i think that's perfect for him or not perfect but it's definitely a good second option compared to what is real now let's go ahead and also talk about some relics because this is where it becomes kind of a doozy right so you have four different sets that you can kind of run on him uh thief of shooting meteor is still one of the best sets to run on break effect characters it's what i run on my ron may right now uh increases break effect by 16 percent and increases the wearer's break effect by 16 percent on the four piece after the wearer inflicts weakness break on an enemy regenerates three energy because you're wanting to bring your energy back up so it's definitely something to keep in mind you could run a, in my opinion, two piece messengers travel or messenger traveling uh, hacker space. You could run a four piece on this as well. Increases speed by 6%. And when the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally, speed of all allies increases by 12% for one turn. This effect cannot be stacked. So this is good in the sense of if you want to build a buffer uh, Gallagher, I guess, in a way. You could go with the OG healing set, right? Two piece uh, of the passer by of Wandering Cloud increases outgoing healing by 10%. And the four piece at the start of the battle immediately regenerates one skill point. Pretty cool. Um, or you could even go as a newer set, the Watchmaker Master of Dream Machinations. Uh, increases break effect by 60% on the two piece and on the four piece when the wearer uses their ultimate on an ally. All allies break effect increases by 30% for two turns. I think this is good, but at the same time, um, the break effect needs to go on Gallagher himself. So I would definitely say do not use uh, Watchmaker. Now, Passerby of Wandering Cloud is still a really good set. 
I think that that would be an easy second set. I wouldn't use Messenger Traveling Hacker Space in my opinion because while he does benefit from, from speed, you're probably going to be like more benefit. You're going to benefit more from either increasing your break effect or increasing your healing uh, potential. So I would say either of these two, uh, Thief of Shooting Meteor or Passerby of Wandering Cloud. Now let's go ahead and talk about the two pieces or your ball and chain, right? Uh, you got the Talia right here, which is a very good set. Increases the wearer's break effect by 16%. And when the wearer's speed reaches 145 or higher, the wearer's break effect increases by an extra 20%. So that means that you would definitely have to make sure that you have enough speed for your Gallagher. So what does that mean? You're probably going to be running speed boots on, the, on these guys to boost up that speed. But you need at least 145. If you're not able to reach 145, right, uh, you could do the Broken Keel, which is an increases wearer's effect resistance by 10%. When the uh, wearer's effect resistance is at 30% or higher, all allies crit damage increases by 10%, which means that you'll have to do a little bit of investment into effect resistance, which isn't bad, but definitely not something that you want to focus on. And then, of course, you have Penacone Land of the Dreams, increases the wearer's energy regeneration rate by 5%, increases damage by 10% for all other allies that are of the same type as the wearer which means that if you're running a mono fire team this would be perfect for you however i think that honestly if you're going for the 145 speed talia is definitely a good bet for you because of break effect if you can't get that 145 get yourself a broken keel set just make sure that you have that 30 percent extra uh effect resistance now I would definitely say Thief of Shooting Meteor alongside Talia would probably be your best bet or Thief of Shooting Meteor alongside Broken Keel. You could honestly interchange these two with these two and you'd be perfectly fine. Don't worry about Penacone. That's why we got to get that get rid of that one. So what does that mean? So for your four piece set, right, you're going to want to run a healing percentage bonus. So you want to make sure healing bonus or outgoing healing percentage uh, as your chest piece, followed by speed boots. Always, always, always speed boots on this. And then, of course, for your two pieces here, I definitely would say that HP percentage for your orb and then for your chain ERR, because you want to make sure that you have your energy regeneration rate on your two piece to make sure that you're capitalizing on being able to use that ultimate. So that's just me. But I will say that Gallagher is a very uh, strange kit. Well, not really strange. I wouldn't say strange, but I would say that Gallagher is one of those ones that I feel is like he's a good healer, but not great healer compared to others. So that's just my take on it. I don't think Gallagher is that amazing, but that's just on paper. I have to test him out myself and really see how I feel. So and that's going to be it for today's video. Y'all don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and check out Gamer Subs right there, of course. Look at that. There we go. I had to, I was hidden, right? You, you get what I'm doing. But don't forget to check out Gamer Subs. Use code Taisha for 10% off. And of course, let me know if you're excited for Gallagher or if you're just more excited for Akron. So anyways, y'all, that's going to be it for today. Love you all to death. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Please take care and be safe.